What's up? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. And I decided I wanted to share this um, for a couple of reasons. Um, hi, it's Iadania. And I'm here talking about your um, career. Um, and not necessarily like even just like your whole mission, even though your career and your mission may be aligned, but I'm really just talking about career. And what spawned this was um, I've been doing career coaching. And for those of you that don't know, I am a practically spiritual coach. And what that means is that I merge practical coaching and mentoring techniques um, with spiritual concepts to create a plan for whatever area that I'm coaching in. And I have my group coaching where we're doing self-love, awakens purpose. And then I've been doing individual career coaching. So each session starts with us first looking at what it is that your soul wanted to do from a career perspective. And I realized I hadn't sat with my birth chart in a while and really like looked at it the way I've been looking at it for my clients. So I actually did it for myself last night. And it was like, what was really cool was that my job, my business that I'm cultivating actually really does reflect my birth chart. And there are nuances of what I do in my day job, what I've done in my life overall that I can see, but I can definitely see the larger picture with the business that I'm trying to build. Um, I can also see it in the imaginary job that I created. So I wrote a blog, I'll put the link in the description box, but I wrote a blog about what it would be like if I was able to come to work as my full self and what that role would look like. And it would be a role where I could still be do, it'd be a mundane day-to-day, -day, you know, quote unquote mogul job, but I would get to be every bit the witch and priestess and energy worker that I am outside of work while at work. And it's not that those things don't happen unconsciously, but I don't get paid for them. So I wrote a role that would mean I am actually literally getting paid to be all of me, not just bits and pieces and benefit from the fact that I'm naturally intuitive. So I'm gonna pick up stuff anyway. Um, I'm naturally an empath. I'm gonna pick up stuff anyway. Um, but no, I'm going to like use my gift with intention and in a way that would be uh, fulfilling to me. Um, so yeah, be sure to check out the blog and let me know what you think. Um, would you want to do that role if you're somebody that's in spiritual work? Um, would you um, hire that role? Would you want that role for your company? That would be dope to see. Um, but yeah, I did, um, and this is really high level. Like I didn't get into aspects or anything. This is just really high level, um, like looking at career needs. And what I looked at was my midheaven, and my 10th house, I used whole signs. And the reason, and I'm mentioning that because for those that do astrology, like really are in, in, it whole, in whole signs, my midheaven is not in my 10th house. My midheaven is actually in my ninth house. So I actually looked at both. So I looked at my midheaven, my 10th house, my um, sixth house and my second house. So I'm gonna just like, just tell you what it says. And I thought it's really dope. So um, I'm gonna describe my business and what I hope for it to be. And I'm gonna try not to let the glare of the screen in my glasses <laughs> distract me. Um, but, um, so I'm a practically spiritual coach. I'm a practically spiritual illuminator overall. And what that means is that I help people by lighting up the areas that they cannot see. So I don't, when I say I'm not a healer, that doesn't mean there's not healing work involved, but when I'm working with someone, I don't want them to come to me feeling like they're broken because they're not, they just can't see it. I don't want anyone to come to me feeling like I'm gonna help them be expansive, 
because they're not small. They just can't see it. Um, I don't want them to feel like they have to grow and be elevated like they're low because they're not low, they just can't see it. So what I do is light the parts that they don't see. What I am is a candle with a flame. And what I do is just allow some flame to touch their candle and then guide them in keeping their own candle lit so that they can light their own way and walk their own path. So I do this through things like readings. I do this through coaching. Um, I do this through mentorship. I do this through books. Um, I'm working on a new poetry collection that my intention is to finish tonight. Um, Cause you know, full moon, I wanna finish it in conjunction with the full moon because my North node is in Virgo. And so the moon just, it's not aspecting, it's not conjunct now, but it was recently conjunct my North node. So I really feel like North node and Virgo in the third house, communication, um, creating, I definitely feel like it, this, I need to finish it tonight. So that is my intention. So this is, um, what I got and please excuse my children at home and you know I'm also mommy um so my midheaven is in Pisces in the ninth house um and so some of the vocations for Pisces that um I wrote down were like spiritual healer spiritualist um healer psychic poet writer metaphysics artist bartender singer so and i call those out because especially if you're someone that knows me and you watch this you know i have bartended when i was in a sophomore in high school i almost got a record deal <laughs> i'm a poet um and like i said healing work is something that i do i'm in school for metaphysics so yeah um I can be my best self by fulfilling my needs for being committed to a dream or ideal and work um, towards its realization. And if, you know, my business is fairly new, but I've been really like working, like I need to see this come to fruition. Um, um, the other aspect of that, which takes into my 10th house in Aries is I also need to be independent and develop self-awareness. So again, and entrepreneurship is one big thing for Aries. So a leader is another big thing for Aries. So there's that. Um, when I'm competent, the energy that I project is unifying, inspiring, empathetic, and humble. Um, it's also innovative, driven, and confident. When I'm unsure of myself, I can be um, restless, um, start something but not finish. Again, that's that desire I have right now to finish something. Um, impatient, chaotic, secretive, self-destructive, indecisive, and hypersensitive. All of these are huge facts for me. Um, what your midheaven is your point of public recognition. It is where people outside will recognize you. It's what how other people see you as not necessarily how you see yourself, but it's how other people are going to see you and what you'll be known for in life. So based on where my midheaven is, is I wish to be recognized for my emotional and creative, um, my emotional, creative, inspirational and nurturing accomplishments. What I want to express and be known for are my emotions, feelings and daily habits and using empathy and compassion to perceive unity. Um, and that comes from the fact that I have moon in my 10th house in Aries. So, that's my 10th house. Like I said, it's high level. So that's my 10th. That's like not even digging any deeper already. You can see, you know, what I want to do. Um, even the little things that I've done in other places, like, um, you know, ninth house, like, you know, big teacher energy. And I'm always in a position where I'm training somebody to do something. I'm always training somebody to do something in some way. And I'm always also doing it in a way that takes a really high abstract contract um, concept Pisces and bringing it down to earth Virgo and simplifying it. That's just not a natural innate talent. I'm not negating myself because my south node is also conjunct my midheaven. So it's allowing myself to still tap in all of those past life gifts 
and things that I'm great with in my South Node, but grounding them down into tangible results and um, blessings that I can see in my North Node. So my sixth house, which is um, my date, you know, your day-to-day -day life, your work and um, essential. So based on my sixth house being in Sagittarius, um, in my in my day-to-day -day life, I need in my daily routines to fulfill my need to explore and expand the horizons of my mind and world. Um, therefore, in my um, daily work environment, I need to be understanding, visionary, hopeful, freedom-loving, and truthful. And looking at my day job, I did a test to, um, they had us all do this test to determine our strengths. And my top two strengths are provider and teacher. And as a provider, I don't like to see people left behind. Uh, think um, my birthday cards are the high priestess and justice. So that kind of like justice energy, I, it needs to be balanced. It needs to be fair. It needs to make sense to me. The Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. It really does need to make sense for the greater whole as opposed to just the individual. Um, so that's a big thing for me. And I'm constantly in this position sometimes where I feel like, y'all not gonna say nothing? Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'm gonna try. No, I can't, I can't. And then I, I'll end up having to say something. Um, so that's that. And then um, it says, well, my needs aren't met. I am opinionated, <laughs> uh, yeah. opinionated, ungrounded, impractical, scattered, restless, and wasteful. Restless came up a lot. Like if I'm not feeling where I'm at, I'm real restless. I got, I got to be on the move. I got to go. I got to be on the move. And that's very accurate. So from work, I need the freedom to pursue my goals and ideals in my routine. Um, uh, and for, uh, from work, I need to, the freedom to pursue my goals and ideals. In my routine, I wish to express my capacity to attract people and things that I love and value. I have a Venus in Sagittarius. And then my capacity to transcend the finite self through expressing unity with the greater whole. I also have a Neptune in Sagittarius. So I have very much Jupiterian energy because both Pisces and Sagittarius are ruled by Jupiter traditionally. Um, so I have big Jupiter energy um, that is in line to my career. Add that to the fact that I have Jupiter in my second house, which is what's coming next. So my second house, this is your house of your resources, what you value, how you add value. It's also the house of your voice, but I didn't, not getting into that, but when it comes to work, it's like your resources. So I can best attract resources by fulfilling my need to be creatively expressive, um, by creatively expressing myself and be appreciated by others. I have a Leo second house. Um, when I'm successful, I can be self-assured, self-confident, dynamic, creative, a leader and creative. Um, best way to have seen that is watching me, actually watching me at work in general. The moment I am at my absolute best, when I'm like in the fullness of who I am and pulling resources is when I'm being really creative and innovative. I can see that. I've seen that in like every role I've had. Um, I'm creating something to help enhance how I do the role. Um, checklist when I worked at um, the restaurant. Um, you know, I, in, in my mind, I feel like I did checklists when I worked at the club too. That's funny. Um, but, you know, bartending in the club, I'm creating um, checklists in the restaurant, um, creating a strategy on how to train up servers. Um, our kids night festivities, like creating a calendar of events and what that needs to look like. I know even what, at one point I was like actually create, helping to reformat and do coupons. Like it was just constant creating. Even in the, um, where I'm at now, like I, we have a national women's group 
but we didn't have a chapter of that group locally. And so I launched a chapter of that group and just watching that birthing process and what that looked like. And I still feel like sometimes I'm chasing that. That's, the, that's what I'm trying to replicate now. Um, but when I'm successful, um, no, when I'm not successful, when I, um, and when I'm not feeling like I have those resources or I'm living in the fullness of my potential, um, I have a lack of attitude. Um, selfish, arrogant, possessive, I'm really doubtful in myself. Um, I possess inspirational resources. It's my ability to create new visions and goals. Like that is like my big talent. Um, and when I desire to develop my earning potential, um, to develop my earning potential, I can use um, my search for meaning, truth, and ethics. And that really plays into the role that I wrote. Like if I was going to do spiritual work in a, an environment that's like, like corporate or something like that, um, the role I created was an employee success consultant. And the reason I wrote the role the way that I did is because looking at spiritual gifts in a way where it's not like, I hate when people say woo, but you know, that's the best way to go, where it's not woo, it's not something foreign because the gifts have always been present. Otherwise there would have been, you know, um, people, uh, um, sorry, just got booked. Uh, there wouldn't have been people like wanting to like, you know, burn witches at the stake. Um, colonizers would have worked so hard to rip away the spiritual practices from um, African and indigenous peoples. It, there wouldn't have been this attack on anything that was, that was spiritual that put the power in the hands of the individual as opposed to the power in somebody else's hands. And they had to go to that person or follow that person's doctrine in order to find source. And but wouldn't have there, it wouldn't be this abstract thing. Everybody has intuition and you know it. You're like, you know, there was just something in my head that told me that's your intuition speaking to you. So in a work environment, it is being able to apply these things in a way that makes sense in this practice. Um, so yeah, that's what I wrote the blog about. But this was really cool because for me, studying my birth chart and looking at things like that tells me I'm in alignment. Like tells me the fact that what I'm trying to do with Nia's garden is completely within alignment. Even when I look at the goddess gathering, my progressed chart. So, you know, you've got your birth chart and then you have as your soul is growing and evolving your progress chart. And in my progress chart, I just had two things happen really recently. And I've been telling people something's up with me. I just feel it, something's up. And my moon just progressed and so did my midheaven. My midheaven just moved. So my midheaven just moved out of Aries into Taurus. I am in a space of receiving my abundance. Mm -hmm. Not only that, Taurus is, Cancer is a divine feminine, but Taurus being ruled by Venus is very, very goddess energy. And I'm just like, yes, yes, I'm here for that. Um, my moon just moved into Scorpio and I'm like, <laughs> we won't even talk about it. We're not, this is, my progressed moon is in Scorpio and for my solar return, I'm a Scorpio rising and natally I'm Scorpio dominant. Transformation activated. Transformation has been activated and I'm just like, okay. Alrighty then, got it. So I'm really excited to see the unfolding and my encouragement for others is that, you know, the fact that I did this after doing everyone else's and was already trying to walk in where I was, like already the things that, you know, I played school a lot as a kid. I was like, teacher has always been a thing. Like as a kid, I'm like, there were two things I said I wanted to be. I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people grow and develop and I wanted to heal people. And I wanted to be a witch. 
those were the three. Teacher, witch, and doctor. Nia's garden is the fulfillment of my childhood dreams. Because in Nia's garden, I can teach, I can heal, and I'm a whole witch. And I love, I love that. I love that. I pray that my inner child feels seen and full moon, sorry, seen and validated. And that's the point because God did not, you know, yeah, we come into this physical body and then we kind of forget everything we decided we wanted to do before we came, but there's hints and there's tools and there's ways that we can help ourselves remember so that we can walk that path. Because sometimes it's hard to listen to our intuition. It's hard to go with our day. And I went so far, like I kept grasping at pieces of it, you know, when it wasn't fully expressed. And what I see now, even now it's not fully expressed, It's big, but it's blooming, it's blooming. It's like, it's no longer like a little bud. It's a little bit like this. It's a little bit like this and it's trying to open up and I'm just going to allow it to open and how it's supposed to unfold because I know, I know in a abstract sense what I'm supposed to do, but I still don't know the end. I still don't know the end. I don't know when it's fully born, what it's actually going to look like. I just know I'm almost there. That's the way I'm going to see it. I'm always going to feel almost there. That's, that's it. I'm going to feel almost there. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm, I give gratitude for the inspiration. You know, I had a dream about somebody and it prompted me to reach out. And in reaching out to him, we ended up talking maybe about three minutes about what the dream was about. And then we ended up talking about work. And then he reminded me of who I am. He quoted me to me. He said, I quote you to other people. What you told me way back in the day when I was, you know, was just new on the team, I've been saying that to other people when they ask me, how is it that I've progressed the way that I have? And I was just like, yo, that's dope. That's really, that's really, really dope. And the next morning, I got the idea to do a quick video. Like it was real quick, it was like a reel. It was real quick, hey, FYI, in case you didn't know, I do career coaching. And immediately somebody was like, this is for me, I need this. And then somebody was like, yo, I need this too. And I'm just like, okay, all righty then. Well, book a consultation. Book a pick, pick your brain session and let's talk about it. And we did, and they both booked. And I'm just like, okay then. But it was just a, it, it literally all started with me saying, yo, I dreamt about you. I dreamt about you. And it just really, it meant a lot. It meant a lot. And I'm trying to get back more into paying attention to what my dreams say and what they're trying to tell me because every time I followed that, something like that has happened every single time. So don't know why I told you that. Apparently somebody needed to hear that. I don't know who, you're welcome. Whoever it was, you're welcome. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I hope you consider sticking around um, and subscribing. Um, make sure you check out my podcast. I am doing a series, Awakening in the Black Community. Um, my fourth installment, third, third installment is already up. Um, the video for it will be up this weekend, but if you want to listen, the third installment is already up. I'll have the link to all three episodes down there. And I'm also doing a tribute for my mother, who is an author. Um, she's working on a new novel, but she's written a lot of short stories that I think are amazing and that people should be able to experience. So The Witch and the Writer is a tribute to my mother and her short stories. And so I'll be reading her stories periodically on that series. 
So uh, the first one is up and I'll make sure I link that one as well. If you want to tip or off a donation, cash up is below. It's not mandatory, but if you do speak abundance tenfold over your life, as the campers would say. And yeah, I appreciate you watching. Take care. Bye.